welcome back to Retro Rats. Today we are at the British Museum at Gaydon, or British Motor Museum at Gaydon. As you can tell, it's Mini and Metro Day. Let's go and have a look. Straggler. Hi everyone. Do you like minis? No. Do you like metros? No. What are you doing here? Because I love them. Hey, hey. This is the, uh, the car that was on Bangers and Catch. That one chap did it and didn't really want to be filmed. And at the end they gave it to Gaydon Museum. Here it is. So the Mini came in many, many variations, from the standard saloon right through to the van here. There was the Worsley Hornet, which is just behind me, and uh, the Riley Elf, which was a different badge as well. So we're going to have a take a look at the van version. So this is the van version. Very lovely. And then you've got a mini rear boot. This is the Worsley Hornet version. It also had a chrome grill. The Mini was also famous for rallying and John Cooper and the Cooper Works released a lot of different various Minis. Obviously there's a, a group of Coopers here. But there was a different type of sports car alternative, the 1275 GT. It's a 1275 carburetor engine with a club and star front. Come and have a look. There's also two, uh, two versions of alternative bodies, a moak and a scamp, and I'll show you one there.
Austin Rover needed to release something slightly bigger than the Mini. So they released the Mini Metro. It later became the Metro and then the 100. And then we got this evolution. The very early metros, the one here in the goldy grass, copper colour, a lot of these were destroyed because the engine fitted straight into uh, the Mini. So obviously all those Mini owners out there who'd lost their engine would go and buy a Metro because they were cheaper on the market and they'd take the engine out, scrap the body off and use the engine for the Mini because they were the same engine. So there are very few of these survivors left and obviously they did that because the body would rust out and you know, they were the end of life but the engine still had life. So to see a rare survivor of a very early Metro and that's what I mentioned earlier about the difference in the indicators and the side lights and the, the lights being independent. So uh, let's go and have a look at it now. The metro was also used by the local police force. So around about 98-99, Rover decided, or well, they knew that the Metro couldn't continue, it didn't pass future safety standards, and the Mini was coming to the end of its useful production life. It wasn't going to meet new regulations, going into a new era, a new century. So they designed the R50 to replace the Metro and the Mini together. They kind of marketed wrong because they didn't tell anyone that there was going to be a replacement for the Metro and the Mini. They just said it was a replacement for the next generation of Mini. So if people had known that it was replacing the, uh, the, the old Metro, the Rover 100 as well, it might have been more accepting of its size at the time. But either way, it flooded the market. It was well received, aimed at the American market as well, all over the world. This is the Y register stand, the very first of the, uh, the R50s off the production line. And I've brought Ray along today, the yellow one there, just in the distance. And uh, yeah, the story of the R50 begins. Obviously, BMW took it over from Rover and ran with it. And they've still got variations of minis today, even though they are getting bigger and bigger. These are the first ones off the production line. Quite a famous YouTuber just there, R. Tim. Just gonna have a look at the three minutes. So then, ladies and gents, we have got the Y register, the O2S, and the O4 tabs in with us. And you can see there's cameras just around. Come, on, come join your cars. Come join your cars. Uh, this one here. This is this is my new gadget. So apparently, he said the camera follows. Look at that. Look, I'll walk over here. That's good. Isn't it? That is good. AI is going to replace the human race, isn't it? Uh, right, we will start with, well, as it's your 20th birthday, we'll come to you last. So we'll come over to you first. Uh, it's a wire register, but it's on a 51 plate. No, I'm joking. Uh, tell us a little bit about the wire register.
these are the show and shine cars and you can't walk through but one admire them and two get high on polish <laughs> the Mini Advanced, it released different models, so celebration ones. And just in shot here is the 30th year anniversary one, the Mini 30. think cars were made on production lines. No, you're wrong. They foster their young, I'll show you. <laughs> it's always funny when you come across a car that's being discussed on a, on a Facebook forum. <laughs> I saw this car on Facebook a few weeks back and uh, it's really nice to see it in the flesh. It's a slightly different coloured olive but that's, a, that's pretty much my olive and uh, it's just really lovely to see another one out there and about. That's a proper retro. If I had a sticker, I'd have given them a sticker. That's a proper retro rat's paint they're job. Ordered. Yeah, yeah, they're ordered. So if you watch this video and you want a sticker, this your car, message us. I like that. Top effort. That is nice. I hope you're going to do the rest of the car. And the back, Peggy. Well, except for that bit there. It looks better. It looks better in white, on the white. I like that. Well done. Top notch. I'm just walking around, and I've come across this one. Don't know if the camera's going to get it. I think it will. Fair play to you. That is flipping wonderful. Love it. There's a lot of speckles of colour in that. This is probably the rarest car here and, and quite a rare car in itself. But it's at a Mini and Metro day. Ah, it's, 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 a, it's the cousin, isn't it? It's, it's, it's still a good Cowley Museum, Cowley <laughs> built, isn't it? August 78. Very nice. They use those door handles on the Lotus.
as you guys know I absolutely love a Metro and here's an Immaculate 1.3 there's the five door looks to me like a Van den Plas model but maybe it isn't because it hasn't got VP all the wooden trim so maybe it's not a VP model but either way that is well it's a GS but that is ah, it's probably in better condition now than the day it came out of the showroom beautiful beautiful I'm an absolute Metro fan had loads of metros still got a rover 100 and bringing here coming here today and just seeing all of these really really invigorates me absolutely love it let's go see what else we find well let's have a look at this little uh, early metro here really uh technicolor it's lovely 81 tax disc look at that vinyl in here. You could almost be back in 1981 showroom and um, let's have a look at the uh, the lovely regalia that's gone with it. Henley's parts, manufacturing certificate, the Austin Metro brochures, Austin Metro book, absolutely lovely. I've got a guest with me who can't be on the camera, but shout out. Do you love metros? Yeah. Excellent. That's a proper little mini metro. Absolutely love it. it uh, the owner's not here at the minute, but thanks for bringing that. That is fantastic. That's uh, pretty cool. It's just been pointed out to me. The eyes. I think Peggy's has got the eyes. But I've more, I've, I think the Lego intake cone and battery cover is uh, is pretty funny. Well done. So we've got another selection of metros here. I just had a lovely conversation with a couple that had a silver later metro. This is not an A-Rage, right? that's a it's got a it's gotta be a private plate. If it's not a private plate, then that is really really tidy. Looks like a later one to me. Clubman 1.3. Yeah. I would have thought that's sort of a H or a G reg model that, but uh, might be a private plate on it, but it's in excellent condition and really pleased to see it here today. Sitting quite proud on its hydroelastic suspension. It's uh, perfect. Well done, top score. Sunroof as well. Very nice. This is the GTA. They did a few sports versions. Obviously the, uh, the turbo was the most sought after, the most expensive sports model. Don't think we'll find a turbo here today. Very, very rare now. But, uh, yeah, see, that's a G. Very nice. The later metros had, um, they incorporated the indicators and the side lights into one panel, whereas the earlier metros were single with a side light down the bottom and the indicator down the bottom. But, uh, yeah, very nice. I also said I didn't think it would be a turbo here, but I was wrong. Typical. We loved it. And again, you know, the handle was so well, don't we? Same concept, and you know. I've just had the suspension thing. So regular viewers to the channel will know that I do have, me and Peggy do have a Clubman estate and I absolutely love it, uh, called Olive, and Olive needs some work, so uh, that's why she isn't being used this year, she's, I'm making space at the workshop and there'll be some videos on her this year, we're going to have a go at uh, doing some of the bodywork and replacing the radiator and so on, so there's some sick, exciting times ahead and uh, I've been purchasing the bits to do that but I'm so pleased to see this one here today brilliant same year as Nippy Norm same colour, same trim, even the same seats. The only difference with those seats is this is two door, mine's five. So obviously this has got the lift up section. But, uh, yeah, the dash is the same. 40 seal, I think that's on. Nice, uh, 
regalia there. Knightsbridge, that's what ours is. Very nice, lovely to see it here. Really, ah, oh, I'm enjoying the metros. And uh, this is a proper 80s throwback, this is. Computer vision. Um, something crazy going on with this. Lotus Performance. Um, yeah, couldn't tell you much about that. That is going to be one hell of a beast. That's a crazy, crazy, crazy race car. Fish on land. 